Ayavazi Tamil Ayavali Malayalam Ayavali Ayavali JV listen path of the master is a universalizing henotheistic belief that originated in South India it is cited as an independent monistic religion by several newspapers government reports journals and academic researchers in Indian censuses however the majority of its followers declare themselves as Hindus Therefore, Ayavazi is also considered a Hindu denomination. Ayavazi is centered on the life and preachings of Ayavakandar. Its ideas and philosophy are based on the holy texts Akilathiratu Amanai and Arul Nul. Accordingly, Vaikandar was the Purna avatar of Narayana. Ayavazi shares many ideas with Hinduism in its beliefs and practice, but differs considerably in its concepts of good and evil and dharma. Ayavazi is classified as a dharmic belief because of its central focus on dharma. Ayavazi first came to public attention in the 19th century as a Hindu sect. Vaikandar's activities and the growing number of followers caused a reformation and revolution in 19th century Travancorean and Tamil society, surprising the feudal social system of South India. It also triggered a number of reform movements, including those of Narayana Guru and Ramalinga Swamigal, etc. Though Ayavazi followers are spread across India, they are primarily present in South India, especially concentrated in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The number of practitioners is estimated to be between 8 million and 10 million although the exact number is unknown, since Ayavazis are reported as Hindus during censuses. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> and history Aya in Tamil means Master, and Vazi, way. The simple translation is Master's way or Father's way. Due to the diverse synonymous versions for the phrase in Tamil, it also leads to various other theories. Ayavazi began to be noticed initially by the large number of people gathering to worship Vaikandar, known historically as Mudasudam Purumal. C. 1809 C. 1851 CE at Puvandanthop. The Thavayal Thavasu washing penance of 1840 is the origin of Ayavazi as an alternative religio-cultural phenomena. The majority of its participants were from marginalized and poor sections of society. They began to function as a distinct and autonomous society, and gradually, they identified their path with the phrase Ayavazi. Single quote dot. Although the majority of these followers were from the Nadar caste, a large number of people from other castes also follow it. Ayavazi's rapid growth throughout its first century of existence was noted by Christian missionary reports from the mid 19th century. By the middle of 19th century, Ayavazi had come to be a recognizable religious phenomenon with deep roots in the regions of South Travancore and South Tirunelveli. The numbers of faithful increased significantly from the 1840s. By the close of the 19th century, Swamithop was considered the religio-cultural EPI center of Ayavazi. After the time of Vaikandar, Ayavazi was spread through his teachings. The five cedars, disciples of Vaikandar and their descendants, traveled to several parts of the country bearing the mission of Ayavazi. Meanwhile, the Payan dynasty started administrating the Swamithop patha, while other pathas came under the administration of the followers of Aya. Following the instructions of Akilatira to Amanai the Nizhal Thangals small pagodas have been established across the country for worship and the study of scripture. Arul Nul, the first Ayavazi work in print was released in 1927, followed by the Akilam in 1933, almost a century after it had been written down. As a result, Ayavazi abandoned active oral traditions in favor of literary scriptures. Ayavazi headquarter reports that Ayavazi spread more rapidly after Indian independence 1940s and still more rapidly through the 1990s. Many Ayavazi-based social welfare organizations were established in the late 20th century. Several alternative versions of Akilam, including some controversial versions, were released during the same period. The Anbukotamakal Thiruchabai, a democratic bureau, was established by the religious headquarters in the early 1990s to organize and govern the religion. Organizational conferences are held in various cities in South India including Mumbai, Chennai and Tiruvananthapuram. Considering the growth of Ayavazi, Ayavakanda Avataram, the day of Vakandar's incarnation, was declared a holiday by the state administration for the district of Kanyakumari in 1994, followed by the districts of Tirunelveli and Tutakoran in 2006. 
From 2012 CE Vaikunta Avataram was declared a restricted holiday for the entire Tamil Nadu state, and for the Kerala state from 2015. Currently, Bala Prajapathi Adikalar, heir to the Payan dynasty, is considered the leader of Ayavazi. Topic. Scriptures and holy places Topic. The holy books of Ayavazi are the Akilatira to Amanai commonly referred to as Akilam and the Arul Nul, and they are the source of the religion's mythology. The Akilatira to Amanai was written by Hari Gopalan Siddhar in 1841, as if hearing the contents of Akilam told by Narayana to his consort Lakshmi. In addition to the mythological events Akilam also provides an extensive quantity of historical facts, especially that of mid and late 2nd millennium CE. While the original text is damaged, the daughter versions such as the Swamithope version, the Kadingadu version as well as the Panchalankarichi versions, are the earliest existing palm leaf versions of Akilam. Other released versions includes the Centrithase Ventraparumal, the Vivekanandan, the highly criticized VTV and the earliest and commonly accepted Palaramachandran version. Akilam contains more than 15,000 verses in 17 sections. It is written in poetic Tamil in a ballad form, and is composed with a unique literal style with two subgenres, Virudam and Natai throughout. The secondary scripture, Arul Nul, includes various books that are believed to be written by Arul Alarkal one possessed by divine power. It contains prayers, hymns and instructions for the way of worship in Ayavazi, as well as rituals prophesy and many acts. It also contains many events found in the Akilam pertaining to the life of Vaikundar. Unlike Akilam, there is no definitive history for Arul Nul. All these texts are compiled in Tamil language. To the Ayavazi devotees, there are seven holy places, called Pathas, with the Pancha Pathas being the most important. The temple of the Swamithope Patha is the headquarters of the Ayavazi. The five Pancha Patha are 1. The Swamithope Patha, the venue of the Great Tavam and the religion's headquarters. 2. Imbala Patha, where Vaikundar joined six of the seven deities unto himself. 3. Mutta Patha, the venue of the second and third Vinche. 4. Thamaraikulam Patha, where the Akilatira to Amanai was written down. 5. Pu Patha, where Aya unified the earth goddess Pumadanthai to himself by symbolic marriage. Vakaipathi, though not included in the Pancha Pathas by the headquarters, is still considered as a Patha but with lesser importance. There is disagreement among followers of Ayavazi regarding the holiness of some other Pathas, such as Vaikunda Patha and Avathara Patha. The list of pathas announced by the headquarters of Ayavazi does not include these pathas. Symbolism The symbol of Ayavazi is a lotus carrying a flame-shaped white namam. The lotus represents the 1008-petaled Sahasrara in Tamil, Ladam, while the namam represents the Aanma Jyoti or Atman. Both of the Ayavazi scriptures refer to Thiruhanam the flame-shaped symbol present in the top of the lotus in the Ayavazi symbol, but not to the lotus directly. The symbol is the ideological summary of Akilam-based philosophy. This symbol has been in use since the mid-20th century. The mythical narration in Akilam about the eight yugas is often viewed philosophically as a reference to eight chakras. The first, Nidya Yukam, is Bindu and the final state, Dharma Yukam, is Sahasrara, or absolute bliss. In this series, the energy of consciousness namam of oneself is invoked, rising from Bindu Nidya Yukam to the final Sahasrara Dharma Yukam. This lotus, the highest spiritual center of enlightenment, is for experiencing the absolute bliss. The reigning power in the final Dharma Yukam Sahasrara is Ekam, which is a part of Vaikundar a trinity conception, or a manifestation of the Supreme Absolute. Thus Ayavazi's symbol is derived from Akilam. The symbol lotus with Thiruhanam shows Vaikundar's experienced in Sahasrara. In certain Hindu texts, the Sahasrara chakra has 1,000 petals. But in Ayavazi symbolism, Saharara has 1,008 petals. In Ayavazi, there is no scriptural authority indicating the importance of 1000, but the number 1008 is commonly mentioned. Also, the incarnation year of Vaikundar is 1008 ME Malayalam era. Backing these scriptural identities, the 1008 petal lotus is followed in Ayavazi symbolism. Sahasrara is symbolized as a lotus without a stem. 
Ayavazi architecture was developed in constructing nizhal thangals, where the inverted lotus flower of Sahasrara is used to cover the roof. The lotus may also represent the heart and the flame shape, the ruhanam, the divinity. Ayavazi has used other symbols including Vaishnavite, triple namam, not used currently, and conch. Topic. Teachings and impact Topic. The majority of Ayavazi's key teachings can be found in the book Akilatiratu Amanai and other teachings are collated from various books written by unknown authors, whose works feature in the Arul Nul. Like Dharma, the other teachings of Ayavazi are twofold, sociological and mystical. The mystical teachings are devoted to revealing divine knowledge, while social teachings are primarily concerned with eliminating inequality and discrimination in society. The teachings encourage a positive relationship with God, as opposed to one based on fear. Followers are encouraged to refer to God as Aya, dear father, to strengthen their intimacy and affection towards God. Ayavazi mystics focus on supreme oneness. Among its variations, the theology always maintains this focus on oneness. The evil of Kali blocks the ultimate or supreme oneness prevailing between individual souls and the universe, creating among them a false sense of individuality and of extreme pride. This erroneous view causes the apparent sense of separation from the oneness and motivates against it. Ekam, the over-soul, or the supreme soul, is identified as the whole of existence, changeless in nature and ubiquity. This is one which undergoes different changes with respect to space and time. Because of the evil force Maya, all of creation evolved from this Ekam, the Supreme Consciousness. All the qualities of Ekam are within each soul, and evolve from it. Each and every individual soul is a reflection or mirror of the Absolute Supreme, Ekam, which provides the textual basis and metaphor for the mirror's role in Ayavazi worship. Human and all other souls are restricted and limited by the evil of Kali. This is why individual souls are not able to attain supreme bliss, and so are secondary to Ekam. Once a soul overcomes the influence of Maya, it becomes one with Ekam. Its individuality is gone, and thereby it is Ekam. On the other hand, this supreme consciousness is personified as Paramatma over soul, by which, God is the husband, while all other souls are his consorts, symbolized by Thirukalyana Ekanai, where Vaikandar marries the individual souls. Also, the Ayavazi philosophy applies a common formula for the creation of human beings and the rest of the universe. Thus whatever exists externally to human beings exists also internally. Ayavazi clearly and explicitly condemns the caste-based inequalities in its social teachings. It heavily criticizes the caste discrimination rather than the caste system itself. From its inception, Ayavazi has also served as an engine of social reform, particularly in the area of Travancore, which was previously noted for its unusually strong caste system. In this contest, the mingling of castes in Ayavazi centers was a vital element in the transformation of society. Aya Vaikandar was the first to succeed as a social reformer in launching political struggle, social renaissance as well as religious reformation in the country. Vaikandar was the pioneer of the social revolutionaries of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Research scholars regard Vaikandar as a teacher, healer and also a miracle worker. He was also said to be the forerunner of all social reformers of India. Akilam displayed sympathy for the laboring classes, and opposed to the often excessive taxes they were forced to pay. From the beginning the followers, fortified by the teachings, have also taken a strong stand against political oppression. This is most clearly seen in Akilam, where the Thiruvidkanar king is identified as Kalanisan, one who is a captive of Kali, and the British are identified as Venison the white Nisan in the social sense. Ayavazi was in the forefront of movements for human rights and social equality. Ayavazi also effected many social changes in southern India, resulting in the emergence of a series of social and self-respect movements such as upper cloth agitation, temple entry agitation and other movements including those of Narayana Guru, Chattampi Swamikal, Valalar and Ayankali. <laughs> Worship centers the followers of Ayavazi established pathas and nizhal thangals, which are centers of worship and religious learning in various parts of the country. They serve as centers for propagation of the beliefs and practices of Ayavazi. 
There are thousands of Nizhal Thangals throughout India, mostly in South India. There are more than 7,000 worship centres in South India mainly in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Reports from the London Missionary Society LMS of the mid-19th century also speak of Nizhal Thangals. Since Ayavazi is not centrally organised, Swamithope Patha serves as the religious headquarters for all. The Pathas earn more importance among the worship centres. The seven Pathas obtain their significance from the fact that Vaikandar and his activities were historically associated with these centres of worship. The Swamithope Patha, though considered the religion's headquarters, does not officially control the rest of the religious centres. All Pathas, except itself, are managed by independent committees. The five Pathas known as Pancha Patha are considered foremost among Pathas. Nizhal Thangals, compared with Pathas, are simple small structures built for worship and for learning the teachings of Vaikandar. They also served as centres of school education during the early days. Food and shelter are offered to the needy in these centres. Some of them were established when Vaikandar was alive. Among them a rule Nul, specifies seven Thangals, and these are considered primary over the others. Today, charity is one of the main activities conducted in these centers. These centers emerged as the abode of Dharma. The Nizhal Thangals form an important institution in the socio religious life of the people of Ayavazi. Panavide may be conducted up to three times daily, but all worship centers provide Panavide at least once daily. Ethics <inaudible> 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 The ethics of Ayavazi, integrated with the meta-narrative mythology, are found throughout the primary scripture, Akilatira to Amanai. Regarding ethics, a rule nul is an accumulation of the core concepts found in Akilam. In Akilam, the ethical abstracts are pointed out as told by God at several places at different situations to lesser godheads, devas, saints, etc. whenever asked by them. Nitham is the primary virtue of Ayavazi. This shows how society, its people, the ruling king, etc., lived in absolute harmony with nature, placing the power of Almighty in all their works, deeds and activities during early ages. In return, nature and the divine beings protect the society which follows the Nitham. Chastity and life in ultimate union with nature form the central theme, an ethical form that is to be followed. As in Akilam, Vinchai is the rules and regulations provided by God Narayana to Vaikandar. There are three such vinche. Acts found there also fit to humans to improve their moral code. The first vinchai of Tirashandor forms the largest ethical accumulation found in Akilam. To an extent, the dharmic teachings in Ayavazi are also considered as ethics. Charity in social ethics and attempting to realize the ultimate truth of oneness in spirituality are the ethical codes under the banner of Ayavazi Dharma. Akilam also gives separate ethics for devas also. It is notable that the Ayavazi ethics undergo a vast deviation from the incarnation of Vaikandar since a universal change took place then. Overall, as the foremost ethical code, people are advocated to overcome the evil force Kalamayi with the weapons of love, forbearance and peace, since Kaliyan as Maya rules the minds of people. A rule nul constitutes the major role in forming the rules and regulations of Ayavazi, including ethics. It gives separately the social as well as divine ethics. The Sivakanda Athikara Patiram here is the section especially dedicated to teach the ethics. The rituals, especially circumambulations, are to be followed to wash out the sin committed related to immoral thinking. Religious studies it is difficult to give a clear-cut listing to Ayavazi concepts because of the relation the Ayavazi scriptures maintains with the Hindu scriptures. Akilam primarily says the central themes of the existing scriptures that of Hindu had gone awry by the advent of Vaikandar. It also narrates that Akilam was given to mankind as an alternative because Kaliyan destroyed the original Vedas and Shastras, and at the beginning of Kali Yuga, several additions were given to the previous scriptures by him. Both of these viewpoints give the views of Akilam on Hindu scriptures, and place them as reasons for rejecting them. The philosophy, terms and mythology of the Ayavazi scriptures are the basis of religious study on Ayavazi theology. But several terms quoted in Akilam couldn't be understood wholly unless by referring to the descriptive details of those terms in Hindu scriptures. For example, if the 96 tattvas are understood, then the Kaliyan is understood. 
Therefore, theologians and philosophers today turn to Hindu scriptures to further their understanding of the tattvas as properties of the human body, which are not elaborated upon in Akilam. However, to understand Akilam and its philosophy, one should have a basic knowledge over the Hindu ideas and concepts. Since Akilam have no different view in this matter from Hindu scriptures, it was left to be gathered from there. On mythical studies, Akilam covers almost the entire main mythology of Hinduism, including Mahabharata, Ramayana, Kantha Purana and Vishnu Purana, but with limited details. It includes only the main events that are directly linked to the mainstream story flow. But to undergo a detailed study on each, the appropriate Hindu scriptures that include those events in detail need to be referred. Akilam provides all these collectively in brief with an overall storyline, which make it unique. Many philosophical concepts from Hinduism are found in Akilam, some of them are completely accepted, some are regenerated, while others are rejected. Generally, it was considered that once a particular concept is not found well described in Ayavazi scriptures, such as Akilatira to Amanai or Arul Nul, as detail as in Hindu scriptures, and instead simply was quoted, then that particular conception is accepted as in Hindu scriptures for religious studies. But once Akilam has different views over something from that of the existing Hindu scriptures, then it would be found deeply described in Akilam itself and hence no need for referring other scriptures. Theology The theology of Ayavazi differs considerably from other monistic religions. It speaks of Ekam, the oneness from which all that exists formed, and also an ultimate oneness that exists behind all differences. The Ekam, which is articulated as the supreme divine power itself, is supposed to remain unaffected by Maya deep inside every changeable matter as an absolute constant. In theological terms, God is, in the highest sense, formless, infinite, genderless and beyond time and space. The term Ekam in Tamil language gives simply the meanings. One. Absolute the whole which exists, and the incomparable, all give some sort of direct monistic definition about God from Ayavazi theology. Narrating through mythology, the Saivam and the Sakti are the first to get evolved from Ekam. The Natham voice, Trimurti, other lesser gods and the entire universe further evolved. The Trimurti are greater among the personified Devas. Shiva, one among the Trimurti, was the supreme power until Kali Yuga. Vishnu is the supreme from the advent of Kali Yuga. Then, from the incarnation of Vaikandar, again the powers of all godheads, including that of Vishnu, is transformed to Vaikandar. Ekam, the supreme oneness as one among the trinity takes a place within Vaikandar for the present age. Therefore, Vaikandar is said to be the only worshipable and supreme power. However, a quote from Akilam 13 says this supreme oneness Ekam itself is created by Vaikandar, who is a personified god. In this regard, Ayavazi being centered on Vaikandar, is more monotheistic rather than monistic. No other godheads, even the father of Vaikandar, Narayana, have gained an equal or greater status than Vaikandar. Vaikandar is a terrene power who includes the qualities of the Santrar, Narayana and Ekam within himself. In Ayavazi mythology, Kroni, a primordial evil manifestation, was fragmented into six and each fragment took birth and plays an anti-Vishnu role throughout the successive six yugas. He was finally destroyed by a final judgment which is followed by the god-ruled Dharma Yukam. This narration gives some dualistic dimension to Ayavazi theology. But since the focus of a rule nul, the accumulation of Ayavazi teachings is extremely monistic and since the final fragment of Kroni itself is called Kalamayai, a conception rather than a physical or material incarnation, it was commonly accepted that the Maya is symbolized in such a way that contrasts the dualistic view on Ayavazi. Apart from all these, there are also separate quotes in Ayavazi scriptures which give pantheistic and panentheistic definition to Ayavazi theology. <laughs> Festivals and rituals There are two yearly festivals for Ayavazi. The Ayavakanda Avataram is celebrated on the 20th day of the Tamil month Masi March to April. This is the only Ayavazi festival to be celebrated as per the solar calendar. The mass procession conducted on this day from Nagarkoil to Swamithop is a popular one in this part of the country. The Thiru Adu Vasapu is a festival of 17 days celebrated in the Tamil month of Karthagai November to December. 
This celebration of textual reciting as a festival itself is a unique feature to Ayavazi. Apart from this, there is a tri-yearly celebration of Kodayatru Thirunal in Swamithope. Another unique feature is the celebration of every day as a festival in Swamithope, exclusive to Swamithope called as Nitham Thirunal. In addition to the philosophical concepts and mythology, the rituals of Ayavazi evolved in their own way. Most of the rituals have different operational and historical meanings. Historically, the rituals were used or viewed as an attempt to break the caste-based inequalities prevailed in the society of the time, and to strengthen and uplift the sociologically downtrodden and ill-treated. Examples of this include the charity on food as anadharmam, physical as well as spiritual cleanliness through thavail thavasu, eliminating untouchability through thatunamam, self-respect and courage through headgear, and unifying various castes through motherakinaru. But they too reveal, however, high philosophical ideas preached in a ritual language. The Motherakinaru and Thiruhanam are treated religiously as if the Potham and Namam of them have the power to heal all sorts of mental as well as physical illness. The Vile Thavasu is suggested as a training to reach the ultimate aim of Dharma Yukam. The use of the crown reveals that, all are kings, visualizing an ideology similar to Advaita. Also, Ayavazi scriptures succeeded very much in helping to understand these philosophical ideas to the common mass which is very much unusual. The individual rituals, the ecstatic religiosity and the ritual healing, which are the features of Ayavazi worship, contributed to the formation of an idea of emancipation and a social discourse. Rituals attempt to uplift and treat the disenfranchised. Another important thing to be noted is the alternative phrases religiously used in Ayavazi universe different from Hinduism, to represent certain practices. Inclusiveness and exclusivity the formula of inclusiveness and exclusivity, as applied in the religio-cultural universe of Ayavazi, is unique because both the theories are mixed up in Ayavazi scriptures. The inclusive theory accepts the views of different religions for a certain period of time, and from then onwards exclusively rejects all of them in its narrative. Ayavazi accepts different godheads of several religions, like the concept of Allah and almost all the godheads of Hinduism. It also says that the one and the same God incarnates in different parts of the world at different time for rescuing the people from sufferings. But due to the advent of Kalian and because of the cruel nature of his boons, for the first time, the supreme power Ekam incarnates in the world as Vaikandar, and so all the lesser god heads and previous scriptures had lost their substances. So after the time of the Vaikanda avatar, Vaikandar was said to be the only worshipable god and hence, the theology of Ayavazi was channeled towards exclusivism. The manner in which Achillam treats the scriptures of different religions is complicated. For instance, while there is no direct reference to the terms Christ or Bible anywhere in any of the Ayavazi texts, there is an indirect reference in Achillam 13 which is supposed to be an implication that Christ was an incarnation of Narayana, but it was widely thought that it did not recognize the Bible composition. It seems the view of Achillam on Bible is, it was created with the intention of man and not that of God. In common, creation of religions and shaping individualities for them are heavily criticized. The concepts, God, and religion, are kept poles apart in Achillam, and it seems to maintain an ideology something like, accept God, reject religion. Ayavazi accepts various incarnations in Hinduism, but necessarily rejects the so-called, Hindu, scriptures. It initially accepts Vedas. Later since Kalian had bought the Vedas as boon they too lost their substance by the advent of Kalian, and so had gone invalid. It also says that he Kalian, had performed several editions and had hidden some of their content. And hence God incarnated as Vaikandar. So for the present age, Achillam is said to be the only book of perfection. By this Ayavazi rejects all other scriptures and follows only its own. Achillam highly condemns the creation of religions especially exclusivistic religious and theological ideas. It shows them as the foremost Kali Mayai evil of Kali. The scriptures teach sensibly and symbolically that God and his activities are beyond the reach of religions. It also preaches about universal oneness. Mythology <inaudible> 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 
The mythology of Ayavazi narrates that the essence of this vision is an account of a history, a past, a present and a future, meant by weaving together of empirical facts, historical events as well as mythical accounts. It moves around three axiomatic topologies, namely Santrar, Kali Yukam and Dharma Yukam, placing their base on the concepts and events of previous yugas that are associated also with Hindu mythology. The basic concepts give a symbolic vision which is at once religious and social, it is closely linked to that of Hinduism. Akilam talks about the previous yugas and the evolution of Kroni through them. Events, mythical characters, and concepts are shared with Hinduism, though they may be engendered in different form. The number of yugas and avatars differs in Ayavazi from Hinduism. The personification of the entity of evil for the current yuga, Kaliyan, is unique to Ayavazi. Akilam says that the true concepts were destroyed, so that all previous scriptures had lost their substances due to the advent of Kali. The book also speaks of God incarnating in the world in the Kali Yukam the present age, to destroy the evil spirit, the final and the most serious manifestation of Kroni. God incarnates as Vaikandar, and since Vaikandar lived recently, he was well known in history. So in the second part of the mythology many mythical as well as historical facts were woven together. Most of the events such as Mother Akinaru, wearing of headgear during worship, the vile Thavasu all were noted in history. Asterisk chakras, the yugas assumed as chakras and as geological time periods above, are philosophical and geological metaphors respectively and are not mentioned directly so in Akilam. Asterisk asterisk Cambrian explosion, as per Akilam the crony is fragmented into six and each of the fragments took birth in each subsequent yugas. So the death of Crony as in the Achillam narrative is to be considered as the Cambrian explosion, where the diversification of life begins, in spite of it being listed as an extinction in the context of the destruction of Crony. Though there are quotes in Arul Nul to accredit the ten avatars of Vishnu, it seems that they are not seen in equal status with these incarnations as in the table. It was considered secondary to the primary avatars, who are associated with the destructions of the fragments of Crony. This view is not inconsistent with Hinduism, as only Narasimha, Rama and Krishna are considered the primary avatars who are still worshipped. The other avatars are considered secondary avatars who are not worshipped. Santra and Dharma Yukam topic The Santra is the subject of the religious vision of Ayavazi. There is both a religious and a social category in its connotation. In the social sense, it is believed that the term Santra fits rightly to the early Chaners, who were called by the Arabs as Al Hind, and known in biblical times as the People of Five Rivers. They are now scattered with more than 250 branches throughout the world. But in turn, in ideological sense and from the literary meaning of the term Santra in Tamil, it represents one who is noble and lives with dignity and supreme knowledge, giving an inclusive character and universal reach. Historians account that in ancient Dravidian cultures, zealous devotees of God were called as Chaners. A quote from Achillam II reads, Chaners are those who have the ability to see the invisible constantly. The Santra are given a historical background in Ayavazi mythology as seven boys who were made to be born in the mythical garden Iota Amir the Vanam, supposed to be between present day Sarangam, Tamil Nadu, and Trikonamali, Sri Lanka, by using the seven seeds from seven upper worlds, by Thirumal, to the seven virgins. Theologians interpret that these seven boys refer to the ancestors of the whole human race, and hence the term Santra refers to the entire human race. Their lineage started at the end phase of Devapara Yukam and continued through the Kali Yukam into the Dharma Yukam. It is believed that Kali is being destroyed continuously by the activities of the Santra in the path of Vaikandar, and so the Dharma Yukam unfolds eventually. In this sense, they have a considerable role in the destruction of Kali, the foremost evil. The Ayavazi proposes an emancipatory utopia under the banner of Dharma Yukam. The basis of the belief is that Ayavakandar had come to establish and rule as the everlasting king over the Dharma Yukam in the place of Kali Yukam after sentencing Kroni to hell by a final judgment from the lion throne of Dwaraka Patha, the rising mythical landmass which was sunken at the end of Dwapara Yuga by Krishna located southeast of present-day Kanyakumari. The Dharma Yukam is narrated as beyond the limits of time and space. It is often related to moksha, the personal liberation, and to the state of oneness, too. Topic relation with Hinduism Topic The Hindu and Ayavazi ideologies are closely tied to each other. The place where Ayavazi and Hinduism depart from each other is at the advent of Kali Yuga. Akilam says that until the advent of Kali Yuga, the Vedas and all other Hindu scriptures remained with divinity. 
Each of the gods referred to in the scriptures Hindu also remained with all their powers. But from the beginning of Kali Yuga, they and all their virtues collapsed. Kaliyan was a part of the mundane primordial manifestation who spread maya or illusion upon the existing scriptures and devas. In Kali Yuga, all true scriptures are bound to maya and are unhelpful. The reason, as stated in Achillam for the disintegration of the entire system is that, towards the end of Dwapara Yuga, there in Mount Kalash, Shiva believing the words of Devas, created Kaliyan without discussing to Vishnu, who had the responsibility to destroy Kaliyan as per previous deeds. So Vishnu refused to take birth in the world to destroy Kaliyan. So Shiva and Brahma surrendered all their powers to Vishnu. Until this event, Shiva was the supreme power as per Achillam. It is notable that this is a theological idea something similar to Shaivism, where Shiva is supreme to all. Then onwards, however, Vishnu is the supreme power. Here the ideology changes similar to that of Vaishnavism. This supremacy of Vishnu remains like this from the beginning of Kali Yuga until the incarnation of Vaikandar, from where it changes further. During the incarnation, Vishnu himself can not incarnate directly in the world to destroy Kaliyan, since he Kaliyan had bought as boon the power of Devas, including Vishnu's, and spread it all over the world as Maya. So God needs to be incarnated with a new set of rules and with unique importance. A total universal transformation of the power relation of Godheads, the rules of scriptures, the Dharma, etc., took place, and Vaikandar was given birth by taking in the power of Ekam, by Lakshmi and Vishnu conjoining together inside the sea, and from now onwards all the powers were handled over from Vishnu to Vaikandar inside the sea. Shiva, Vishnu and Brahma therefore form a part within Vaikandar. This ideology about Trimurti three are equal in power is similar to that of Smartism. Vishnu alone forms a double role, one, within Vaikandar, and the other, as the father of him, remain inside the sea and regulating Vaikandar through Vinche. After Vaikandar was given birth to, by assuming the power of Ekam, Vaikandar was supreme to Vishnu and all other god heads, though Vishnu playing the role of father to Vaikandar. However, Vaikandar had to obey the order of Vishnu, since Vaikandar was given birth to perform the duties of Vishnu, which he Vishnu could not do. Vaikandar and scriptures given by him is the manifestation of the supreme Ekam so, in Ayavazi spirituality, he is the only worshipable universal power regarding scriptures. The first part of Akilam is summed up events of the previous Yugas, which are present in Hindu scriptures. The second part says about the universal transformation and the uniqueness of Vaikandar and his incarnational activities. So as a summary, till the beginning of Kali Yuga, what is Hinduism, that is Ayavazi. From then onwards for a series of reasons, Akilam says that Hindu scriptures and its ideology had lost its purity and was destroyed, and so the Dharma was reconfigured in the name of Akilam and Vaikandar and the Hindu ideas were reformed. Phenomenology Akilam points out its basis as a regeneration of Dharma in the form of an entirely new ideology. But today, most of the followers of Ayavazi address Vaikandar merely as the incarnation of Vishnu. Likewise, most of the Nizhal Thangals were called Narayana Swami Patha or Narayana Swami Temple, similar to Hindu Vaishnavism. Most of the followers also worship Hindu deities such as Kali, Hanuman and other folk deities in spite of the anti-polytheistic ideas based on Ayavazi scripture. Some followers of Ayavazi include Vaikandar as part of the ten avatars of Vishnu as Kalki, while some denominations strongly advocate moksha, the personal liberation, though it is not stated directly in Akilam. Some even reject the Trinity conception in Ayavazi and believe Narayana to be the supreme universal power. The unique monotheistic belief which is the central theme of Akilam is completely unknown among most of the followers today. Deviating far away from the strict monotheistic teachings of Akilam, some Thangals provides Panavide for other lesser gods too. The spread of Ayavazi among the common people was mainly due to the practice of shamanism. Being similar to Hindus in almost all aspects Ayavazi followers are hard to be identified. The only sign to distinguish the practitioners of Ayavazi is the fact that they wore the Thiruhanam a sign on their forehead. The Nizhal Thangals are identified among the other temples by the fact that idols are replaced by mirrors in the Palayurai. 
Only the recitations of a handful of scholars educated in the Ayyavazi scriptures point out the real facts and concepts of Akilam and the philosophical and ideological deviation of Ayyavazi from Hinduism. Not even the Payans from the headquarters able to portray the Akilam based ideology clearly. All these philosophical, ideological, and religious variations in the society of Ayyavazi make them hard to be identified and differentiated as a separate belief and instead taken as a Hindu sect. There is a common belief that Ayyavakandar is a prophet and he had made many prophecies during his earthly years. On the contrary, there are no implications in Akilam or other books of Arul Nul that Vakandar himself foretold anything, except in Thiravasagam 4, Akilam, 12. The common misunderstanding is because, the Akilam and Arul Nul includes hundreds of prophecies and the contents of both the books is being divinely revealed to the cedars by Vakandar and the cedars brought them to the written form. So, instead of the prophecies in both the books being considered that of Cedars it is misunderstood that the prophecies is a Vakandar. Robert Caldwell, one among the very few historians of the contemporary period whose views are always overwhelmingly negative on Vakandar, since himself being a LMS Christian missionary, too referred to the then belief that Cedars disciples profess to foretell events. Topic. Social structure Topic. Ayavazi worship was marked by its simplicity. The absence of idol worship and priestly mediation, and inclusion of alternate type of centers of worship, the pathas and nizhal thangals, were other characteristics of Ayavazi worship. Rituals of Ayavazi are a reform or revolutionary activity, focusing upon social equality, deviating from Hinduism. The rituals are also characterized and bound by religious beliefs that give them an alternative spiritual meaning. Its scriptures cover basic elements and ideas throughout Hinduism. They refer to Shastras, Agamas, Vedas and Puranas. But address them all to be gone awry by the advent of Vaikandar, from where Ayavazi scriptures forms negative ideas over all other traditions. Though Ayavazi shares many godheads with Hinduism, it weaves unique ideology and power assumption for them. Ayavazi can be portrayed as a Hindu renaissance. Ayavazi is viewed as a reform movement too, as it brought many social changes there in the Tamil and Keralite society during the 19th century. The religious structure evolved in the path of Ayavazi scriptures and, as a result, it transfigured itself as an alternative religio-cultural system in the social category. The Ayavazis addressed their system as, ''Path of God'' with the phrase, ''Ayavazi'' On one hand, they believe that their tradition had come to replace all old traditions religions, but on the other hand, they believe that Ayavazi is the synopsis of the world's religious knowledge. On one hand, they believe that Vaikandar unified all deities within him, on the other, as all the previous had gone awry by the advent of Vaikandar. Apart from this, Ayavazi has separate theology, mythology, holy places, worship centers, and ethics of its own. Though many new papers, academic researchers and some of its followers consider it as a separate religion, many of the followers are even of the opinion that this is but a Hindu sect rather than an autonomous religion. They indulge in the mystic practices of possessions and divinations similar to the tribal religions of Tamil Nadu. Also, many of its core beliefs are similar to some Hindu sects such as Advaita and Smartism. Regarding demographics, Ayavazi followers are highly concentrated in South India though found across India, comparatively in less numbers. In Kanyakumari and Tirunelveli districts of Tamil Nadu, it is very hard to find a village without a worship centre of Ayavazi. Apart from the listings from the religious headquarters though it is evident that Ayavazi followers are spread across the India from university papers there are no official figures for the number of followers of Ayavazi because they are considered Hindus in the census. Topic. See also Topic. Ayavazi and Hinduism Bengali Renaissance Dharmic religions Eastern religions Hindu denominations Outline of Ayavazi Religion in India Topic. Notes and references Topic. Topic. Bibliography. Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. 
to discover Ayavazi temples across Sikh world. Ayavakandar the spiritual light. Ayavazi. Views on Vakandar as a saint. Siddhantha of Ayavazi. Ayavakanda Patha. Ayavakandar, a different revolutionist. Ayavazi, in brief. Ayavazi. <laughs>